Hello, everyone. Today, I would like to invite you all to travel to the future. And what's more, it's a trip to a future so endlessly far into the future that it would normally be unimaginable. Specifically, I would like to take you to the future after 10 quintillion years. This is equivalent to nearly 1 billion times the current age of the universe. Gentlemen, welcome to our channel. Imagine such a tremendous age. Have we piqued your interest? Then let's begin. The Apocalypse That Never Came Unlike soothsayers, scientists do not foretell the future, but rather predict it based on the data at hand. Various hypotheses have been presented by scientists as to what would exactly await us after some trillion, quintillion years. According to one theory, what you all will see in 10 quintillion years would be nothing. Literally complete nothingness. There would be disparate particles in the universe, but none of them would be able to touch you. Why is that? It is because of one damn property that Grandpa Einstein discovered. That characteristic has to do with a scenario called the Big Rip. As you all know, the universe is expanding at an accelerating rate due to the action of dark energy. The identity of this energy is unknown, but is not important here. According to the Big Rip theory, after a certain point, dark energy would become stronger than gravity and outweigh all interactions that connect particles to particles. This is an important point. When that happens, dark energy would first tear the galaxy population apart. Then, it would destroy the large-scale structures of the universe, such as the filaments and walls that we are currently observing. Then, individual galaxies, star systems, individual celestial bodies, and finally atoms and molecules would collapse, and finally, the universe would become an orderless chaos of scattered subatomic particles. No particle would ever meet another particle, because the universe would continually expand at the speed of light, pushing particles further and further apart from each other. For particle to meet particle, they would have to travel faster than the speed of light. But as Grandpa Einstein told us earlier, that is impossible. Let us assume here that the Big Rip did not happen, because if it didn't, this video would end here. Because if it didn't, this video would end here. And let's also reject the theory that dark energy would suddenly reverse and start contracting the universe, instead of expanding it. In this theory, the universe would end when all the matter in the universe contracts into one giant black hole, or, more precisely, into the singularity where it all began. Now, of the three theories about the end of the universe, only one remains. That is, the thermal death of the universe. This is the oldest of the truth default theories in existence. From this point on, let us assume that thermal death is correct. Then, the universe would exist even after 10 quintillion years. Only, it would look very different from the universe we are accustomed to. Not a single star. The first thing you would notice if you landed on the Earth quintillions of years from now would be that you would not see our Earth at all. There would be no sun either. The universe itself would appear to be pitch dark to begin with. You would not even see the tiniest light in the universe. Where have all the planets, stars, and galaxies disappeared? Earth has been gone for a long time. It is said that basically, the Earth is slowly coming to an end, and in another 500 million years, the Earth would gradually become a desert due to the increase of radiation from the sun. All carbon dioxide would gradually combine with rocks, the oceans would dry up, and all plants and animals would die. It would take billions more years for the expanding sun to swallow the lifeless Earth. Then, the sun too would eventually age and run out of power, shed its outer shell, and become a small white dwarf star. Then, what would happen to other stars? Stars are known to be born from interstellar gas clouds. Also, the stock of gas in the galaxy is limited. When a star reaches the end of its life and either goes supernova, or simply gives off material and becomes a white dwarf, the material is returned to space from which new stars can be born. For example, the Sun is a star born from exactly such recycled raw materials, 
and is made of material ejected by a supernova called a coatlicue. But it must be understood that the amount of matter returned by a star is less than the amount used to form it. This is because a significant amount of material remains as part of the stellar remnants, white dwarfs, neutron stars, and black holes. Moreover, not all of these recycled raw materials will be used in new stars, but a percentage will be scattered into space. This means that the stock of freely available interstellar gas is running out, which means that the stellar era is coming to an end. Of course, young stars should be born from recycled raw materials for a while, but the number of heavy, bright, short-lived blue and white stars that can become supernovae would almost disappear, and yellow stars and red dwarfs like the Sun would become much more numerous. As the number of such stars increases, the galaxy would clearly become redder and darker. Eventually, star formation would come to a complete halt. In the billions of years that follow, all yellow and orange stars would disappear, leaving only red dwarfs. Red dwarfs are the lightest and faintest stars, but they are also the longest lived. It would be 100 trillion years before that happens. You've probably already noticed. Even if the lifespan of a red dwarf is trillions of years, by the time we reach our future travel destination, it would no longer be glowing. At this point, it is not entirely clear what exactly happens when a red dwarf burns out. Scientists are studying the evolution of stars by observing stars of the same type but of different ages. And so far, not a single red dwarf has aged. The universe is too young for that to happen. Thus, after 10 quintillion years, the universe would have only white dwarfs, neutron stars, and black holes, which are the remnants of stars. Although these objects would eventually collapse, again, no time has yet elapsed to that point. With few exceptions, the remnants of these stars do not have planetary systems. As no new stars are formed, no new planets are born nearby. What then would happen to the old planets? After such a long time, a planet that has miraculously survived the death of its host star would drop out of its orbit. It is true that this rarely happens, but statistics are cruel. Let's say, for example, that an event has a 1% chance of occurring in a billion years. Then it could happen at least 10 times in a trillion years. Then how many times could it happen in 10 quintillion years? Please do your own calculations. In other words, if a planet survives a local apocalypse, it may not disappear, but it would become an orphaned planet wandering in space. And 10 quintillion years is enough time for a galaxy to start collapsing. The supermassive black holes and dark matter itself, which gravitationally attach the galaxies, would not disappear anywhere. However, as time progresses, more and more celestial bodies would encounter other objects and be driven out of the galaxy and the more objects that leave the galaxy, the less mass the galaxy has, and the easier it would be for many other objects to leave the galaxy as well. And the number of black holes, neutron stars, and white dwarfs would be much larger than the number of stars today. These objects would be more evenly distributed in space due to the collapse of the galaxy. But when you all arrive at that age, you would most likely appear in a large population composed of the remnants of these stars. This concludes this video. Thank you all for watching. I hope you like this video. So, this is what the universe would look like after 10 quintillions of years. The universe would be darker, gloomier, more messed up, and no life forms would be found. If the human race were to survive until then, we would either have to find another universe to live in or do something about this one. I would like to believe that you will come up with something. Please subscribe and like our channel. And don't forget to share this video on your social networking sites. Thank you for all your support in developing this channel. That's all for now. See you all again. Bye!